So what we're looking at is a uh, left knee. We have an example of a medial from O'Connell defect along the central weight bearing zone, and it's approximately 4, 8, 12, probably 14 in length, 4, 6 in width, but small specimen, probably female. So it gives you a sense of um, how a, even a small defect with a small femoral condyle can be somewhat ominous because the shared load of the defect relative to the intact cartilage is actually quite big. So relatively small defect, probably a great one for marrow stimulation, for example, or in this case, uh, a, a tagus cartilage graft. Um, so what we're going to do is do a standard marrow stimulation technique. And, you know, this is very atraumatic. There's no, using a power pick uh, has no associated necrosis with it. It's very precise. There's no crack propagation. So the risk of uh, subcondyl stiffening, sclerosis, cystic change, as we've seen by MRI, goes down significantly. And the sole purpose is to stimulate access points to uh, endogenous MSCs. And that's it. You want to try to avoid confluence if you can. Not much more we can do here when you look at the defect. So I'll stop because we don't want to break down the, the surface too much. So we'll just clean this out. And then next we're going to demonstrate the graft net. So basically there's suction tubing that will marry to the suction on the end of the shaver. And there's a receptacle that has laser markings. There's a inner receptacle that will actually serve as a filter and capture the whatever material you're going to be harvesting. It could be cartilage, could be bone for various applications. And this T-handled tissue plunger will actually capture any of the material on its surface here with the fluid that passes around it going through the mesh to isolate whatever tissue you're interested in. So we have uh, we have a passport cannula now just to control egress of fluid and allow instrumentation. This is a, a one by two, one centimeter diameter by two centimeter length. We're using a bone cutter. In this case, it's a 5-0 bone cutter. And while a lot of times you'll be accustomed to using this in a, a single direction, we're going to use on oscillate to get what we believe to be the proper particulate size. All right, so one way to do this is we could start, as I mentioned, we can get it from the intercontinental notch on oscillate and get it right from the edge. There's another place that is also very easy and we'll put the knee in extension. Okay, so now the knee is in an extension and we can get this non-wapering edge. Again, um, really easier to do in terms of the fragment size on oscillate. So my suction is on. So we're, again, we're, we're working off the far edge, trying to minimize the amount of bone. Now, obviously, if you needed bone graft for an ACL tunnel, a revision situation, you want a bone graft for a concomitant osteotomy, uh, for a patella defect grafting after a BTB autograft, for tibial tubercle grafting, this would be a really good way to get graft from non-weight bearing areas. So we'll come down the far edge. And then, you know, if you had an interest in getting more, we can switch the camera to the inferior medial portal and we can go up to the lateral trochlear edge and do the same thing. So lateral from a condyle, lateral trochlear edge, and also pretty easy to get a non-weight bearing area from here. All the while we're accumulating you know, up two to three cc's of articular cartilage that'll be sort of, sort of our basis for graft material that can be combined with something of your choosing. It could be ACP, it could be bone marrow concentrate, for example. So next we'll disconnect the suction from the system. Then we'll disconnect the graft net from the shaver. We'll uncouple the housing of the graft net. And you can see visually that it looks like we've got about two cc's of articular cartilage autographed. But next we'll pull out the T-handled plunger with the articular cartilage in place. Carefully here. Good. So you've got quite a bit of tissue here. Next to free your elevator into our mixing syringe. And I'm going to place it right towards the base of it to make it easy to get into the syringe. Next we'll hydrate this a bit with some type of autologous fluid, it could be PRP, it could be bone marrow concentrate, for example, to improve the consistency and for it to act as a carrier for anything that may be inductive. Disconnect the uh, proximal part of the uh, working aspect of the syringe in an effort to mix this. Really trying to get into a homogeneous mix mixture, much like we do with biocartilage. 
Next we'll assemble the syringe. Now it'll function like a traditional syringe. It's no longer a mixing syringe, but it's a traditional syringe. So we're going to introduce in the cannula, and then we're going to extrude it from the cannula using the pusher. So next we're going to prime the cannula, and we'll then use the plunger to deliver it to the end of the cannula. Okay, we'll stop there. We'll start by just using the shaver to eliminate any excess fluid. Then we have some suction swabs. A little trick, whenever you get fluid on the end of the scope, you can touch the scope to soft tissue and then go back to the area you want to visualize when you're trying to do dry arthroscopy. So we'll assemble the, the suction swab. This is a very efficient way. We'll go through the passport cannula to dry the defect. Because inevitably we'll be using some type of biologic glue that's fibrin based to seal the autologous graft. Next we'll introduce the graft. You'd like to try to have all the soft tissue away from the lesion so you can manipulate the graft with a freer. So in this case we used uh, an accessory portal to use a freer elevator to help manipulate the graft outside of the introducer and all this is, you know, it's a, it's a dry field and then once the paste mixture is applied to the defect we would then use some type of autologous based fibrin product to glue over the material. So post-operatively this would be just like a marrow stimulation technique. Patients would be touched down uh, weight bearing at most for a femoral condyle lesion. If it's a trochlea or patella lesion I would weight bear them in extension unless you did a tub tubular tubical osteotomy and protected weight bearing for a weight bearing lesion like a femoral condyle lesion would go on for approximately six weeks. If possible CPM or its equivalent would be optimal and that should be for four to six hours a day. It's not as much about the degree of flexion as the fact that they're moving it with CPM. So just things to think about. We avoid impact for at least uh, four to six months. And uh, return to sport really depends upon the timeline of symptom relief. But it could be six, eight months. Could be sh it could be shorter depending on a lesion. It's kind of all about symptoms, but I wouldn't think about impact loading for at least four months just because you've got to protect the subcondyl bone.